Hello there, morons. And I don't mean that as an insult. This is Victor, the king of the morons, and this is a laundry video, which means you don't have to watch. So I was playing around. So, you know, you don't have to watch. So what did I do? I spent like 20 minutes figuring out how to do this in black and white <laughs> just for fun because I'm a moron. Anyway, today's a laundry video, and uh, it's, a, it's kind of a part two of yesterday's video, which was about the disabled in Japan. I got a question from a viewer. Not a fan. Why am I pointing my finger at you? You can't even see me. Not a fan. Just a viewer who was very insistent, who emailed me literally like six times asking me about disabled children in Japan. And, you know, like I said yesterday, I didn't really know the answers. But as a result of yesterday's video, I got a few people who uh, wanted to weigh in on this. And actually, a couple people made video responses. So I'm, I'm going to go through this. Um, so... Please listen along, uh, join me on another long podcast type epic conversation with me. Now, first of all, first of all, I want to, I want to, I, after, after making that video, I started thinking, you know, I've been here a long time and I started thinking about my vast experiences. Thank you, John. Mm. During the, uh, during the laundry, laundry video, it is my custom to partake in some whiskeys. Today's whiskey will be the Hakshu single malt whiskey that Regan and Kazuko gave to me for my birthday a couple months ago. I still have it. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I wanted to, I remembered some old experiences that I had here in Japan. I thought I'd just bring them up to you. I worked in an A Kaiwa in Tajimi many, many years ago in a, an English school. And one of my students, I just remembered, had Down syndrome. And she came to school with her mom. Um, they left me alone in the classroom with her. Uh, I think you know, the first couple of times, you know, the mom would sit, I think, in the classroom or right outside, to, you know, just to make sure her daughter was okay. She was a pretty young kid. I think she was like 10 or something. And she was okay, you know. She, um, she had Down syndrome, but she, she could pay attention. She could laugh and smile and all that stuff. And, and it was a pleasure teaching her. And her English was damn good. I would say it's actually um, potentially better than many of my normal kids. And I do that with air quotation marks. That's one thing. That's one experience I had. Another experience I had that was kind of interesting was uh, many, many years ago, I was driving in a kind of kind of a uh, good part of town. They had some good high schools there and good colleges. I think these kids were college kids, if I remember correctly. Um, but um, what I was driving, I was driving, uh, driving down the street, and we're we at a red light or something. It's a little little neighborhood street, um, and these kids are on on my right on the sidewalk. Half of them are blindfolded. They, half of them have you know they're they're blindfolded, and with each with each blindfolded kid, there is a jap a they're all Japanese of course. There is a non blindfolded kid guiding them, and I thought that's odd, and I. Uh, uh, I asked somebody, I don't remember who, who I was with at all, but I, I think, I, I, I assume I was with a Japanese person, and they, they told me that that's done to help teach them empathy or something like that, you know, so they can understand what it's like to be handicapped or differently able or whatever the hell PC word you want to use. Uh, but it was funny because I slowed down, well, I, I, did, I, was, stopped, I was stuck there, right, you know, you know uh, in traffic at the red light or whatever watching them and my window was open I guess it was summer or something and one of the kids looks over to me and yells Gaijin <laughs> Gaijin da and they all you know it was a friendly thing it wasn't but it, I thought it was ironic how you know they're supposed to be learning how to be sensitive and you know what it's like to be in other people's shoes and uh, they just yelled Gaijin at me hmm. so those are a few experiences I've had personally um and as I told you yesterday, I do teach a girl who has schizophrenia, schizophrenia, but it's not exactly a learning disorder. It's more of an emotional or psychological problem. Uh, and she's, her English is really, really good. So, you know, obviously schizophrenics can be people with schizophrenia. Yeah, I won't say schizophrenics. People with schizophrenia. It doesn't define you. And it's just something, it's a condition, like a, like a permanent cold, in a, in a way. Uh, that's how I like to look at it anyway. Uh, yeah. So... She, yeah, obviously they can be very, very intelligent. Okay, now, now uh, I'm going to put a lot of this information in the, in the description, so please check. 
But uh, Michael Peckett, who has a physical handicap, I hope that's okay to say, <laughs> uh, he, he did a video on this too. He's, he's, our, regu he's our resident um, expert on uh, certain kinds of handicap, but he has some, he has some, um, some information on that. And he made a short video about that. So check that out. And then another video that was made yesterday. I mean, these are, these are video responses. And as you know, YouTube doesn't allow video responses, which really pisses me off YouTube. We really should do something about that. If I make a video, would you guys support that? Like help spread the word. I'm thinking about making a video saying, come on YouTube, let the video responses come back. Cause they, although they were only, only 1% of the community used them, you know, that was a very important part. All right. Anyway, uh, the other person who wrote, who made one is a guy named Jake Knowlton and I'll have to add, yeah. And his video responses also, I'll add it in the description. And he actually has work. He volunteers, uh, working with, um, I guess, you know, people with uh, learning disorders and he made a video, pretty first person video. So check his out as well. Uh, I got to also thinking about how Japanese deal with, um, with, uh, and by the way, at the end of this video, I'm going to give you, if you're like wondering about where this is going, uh, a couple of people emailed me anonymously. I know who they are, so I can verify to their, I know they're real, they're, they're friends of mine, but I can't really tell you who they are because, because uh, they don't want their jobs to be brought up, you know, on YouTube. They don't want people to know where they work or what they do, but I know them and you probably know them, <laughs> but, and don't try to guess who they are. Just respect their privacy. But, uh, they sent me long emails, fairly long emails, and I spoke to them on the phone. And uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you their stories at the end of this. But I also wanted to bring up some other stuff that was kind of interesting. It's, it's kind of, you know, every society is a little bit, um, well, society, human beings, we are just contradictory, aren't we? We're hypocrites, aren't we? Things that just don't make sense. So I wanted to point out a few articles and things that I came across. Uh, there was an article I think written back in May this year or June, uh, entitled "Disabled Artists Carving Out Niche in Japan." It's about all, all these disabled artists doing well. And that, and, uh, the, the reason I found that was because I was actually looking for an article on Kiyoshi Yamash, Yamashita, who's a famous, uh, he's kind of a va vagabond artist. And that's how I, I couldn't remember his name, but I remember vagabond artist. And he was, he, he's, he was born like night, way back, like I think pre-World War II. Yeah. I think like 1920s or something. And when he, and he's, uh, when he was three, he had some kind of stomach problem and it caused, uh, brain damage or, of some sort. And he had a speech impediment after that. And, you know, the other kids, you know, teased him merciless for it. And he ended up defending himself by stabbing one of the other kids. So his parents put him away, not put him away, but they sent him to a special school for people, uh, a, spe a school that would be better able to handle his, uh, his learning disability. And it was there that he developed this artistic ability and he became very, very famous. And when he was 18, he ran away from his, um, school. Uh, it's, it's a special school for people with problems like, like he has. And, uh, because he, because at that time, I think it was 1940, he didn't want to be, what's the word, uh, forcibly en encrypted and en en enlisted. I can't remember names and words when I'm talking to you guys. Um, he, he didn't want to be, re uh, forcibly, oh, I forgot, drafted into the army. There's another word for it though. Anyway, he didn't want to be drafted and he, and he was afraid that it, if he, if they tested him, cause they test you, right? They test you. He would. He would. Have, he would have to become a soldier. So he ran away. Three years later, they found him like working in a restaurant or something, and they tested him, and he failed anyway. So he wouldn't have gone. To, he wouldn't have gone to war anyway. But anyway, he became a famous artist, and they actually had a like long TV show. I think seventeen years or so a TV show uh, dedicated to his adventures as he wandered around a little bit like kung fu, right? Da -na -na, da -na -na. Now I don't know what kind of. I never. I've never seen the show, but I imagine every week he got into some kind of adventure and and uh, got out of the adventure anyway so that and they also made a movie on that guy okay and uh, of course his 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 paintings are amazing and i will link you again in the description and you should look him up he's, he's pretty pretty cool stuff mm. Mm. anyway so he went to a special school for the mentally disabled so they do they do obviously have them here all right now here's the other interesting part about kiyoshi yamashita who is a really cool guy uh his IQ was 68. Now, what is the significance of that? Before I tell you, if you know the significance of that, put it in the comments, okay? If not, I will tell you right now. Five, four, three, two, one. Well, I'll give you a hint. Uh, the IQ of an idiot is zero to 25. 
the IQ of an imbecile is 26 to 50. I don't know why I'm looking at the numbers. I know these numbers. And the IQ of a moron is 51 to 70. So our beloved Yamashita Kyoshi was a moron. Kyoshi Yamashita uh, in English. <laughs> anyway, I thought that was interesting. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why. I'm, I know I'm, I'm being silly. It's not really relevant. Anyway, on with the video. Uh, let's see. Was, was there anything else I wanted to cover? Yes, he was cool. Oh, yes, yes. Some of the things that I thought, I found some videos. I found a video uh, put out in 2009 and, and, and subtitled in English, was, which was interesting. And it's about um, disabled people in Japan and how this society, a lot of people think that Japan is like so um, anti-handicapped people and they, you know, they just shun people like that. But but that, that Yamashita Kyoshi story shows that that's not exactly true because they, they had a whole TV show dedicated to this guy and he had a mental, mental, he was mentally handicapped, right? So it can't be that bad. And if you think about a lot of the other things in Japan, I should have uh, prepared this better, but the um, the money here there there's a there's a one thousand there's a one thousand five thousand and ten thousand uh, bill yen bill these are the typical money the money that they have here the bills the satsu and they have some apparently if you touch them let me see if I can feel it I can't feel anything <laughs> uh, apparently there's some markings on it oh yeah there's something there there's some markings on it in the bottom right hand corner. Uh, and you can feel something, and that tells you the denomination. It's Catholic. Just kidding. It tells you the kind of money, what it is. So this is obviously 1,000 yen. And I think they're actually different sizes too, which is pretty, you know, that's for blind people. Or I, apparently we're not supposed to say blind anymore. I was looking, I was researching this, and apparently blind is, that that's a, a, apparently a PC, uh, not, not PC anymore. You can't say blind to adversity which I, I don't understand how that's not, that's insulting to blind people. But anyway, uh, I'm an insensitive clod. So the money in Japan is, is, is made especially to deal with, to help blind people, you know, function in society. The sidewalks are paved with yellow markers that are about this wide long and they're all over the place. So if you're trying to get from one side way to another place, you just follow it. And with your stick whatever they call that blind the stick so i'm sure there's a name for it someone please tell me in the description with the stick you can go along and click on it and find you know find your way along uh the the video that we that i that i'll link you to in the bottom call is called 2009 japan disabled and they talk about how the government and the society is is basically prepared uh, it, they they've made they've done a lot of things to help people with handicaps but people don't know about it even handicapped people don't know about it so one of the guys was complaining that, you know, Japan did all this cool stuff, but then they just threw it at us and they left it alone and no one, no one ever, you know, taught us how to use it. So we don't know how to use it and take advantage of it. And a lot of like regular folks, non-handicapped folks, I guess we should say, uh, do not, don't even know about like the, the, this thing about the money. Right. So, and they don't know. And, and, and although they know, obviously everyone knows about the, the yellow thing on, on the sidewalks that's raised up so you can guide yourself. People park their bicycles on it all the time. Uh, at least in 2009 they did. Uh, I think these days they've got uh, uh, something that's interesting is that a lot of uh, retired salarymen will work almost at volunteer level for the local government, like rearranging bicycles, or, they, or at least they used to. Nowadays they charge a lot. They charge you to park on the street in, in Japan now, and at least in, in big cities. I'm sure in small cities it's not like that, it's not like that but yeah, they do that. Um, so... What was it? Where was I? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there used to be a problem with that. I think that's not, there used to be a problem with people parking their bicycles on the yellow lines. Nowadays, it's not that, that big of a problem, I think, I'm imagining, right? Uh, there, most, uh, most subways have elevators and have, you know, you can take the elevator up and down. Um, though it's, if you're in a wheelchair, it's still hard to get exactly onto the subway without help. And it's quite often that I see when I take a subway, it's like, really, it's really all the time, actually, uh, uh you'll see the subway staff down there with a kind of like a, 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 fo a folding bo board that looks like a poster that you fold. And of course it's not made of paper. It's made of something like steel or aluminum and they open it up and then they put it on the ground so people can roll their wheelchair in and out of subways uh, and all and usually it's in the first car so usually if you have a if you have a wheelchair you'll park in the first car 
and you can roll in and out and they'll be waiting for you like they know like they signal hey the guys in wheelchairs coming i guess mm. when i first came to japan 20 23 years ago or so i remember seeing people in wheelchairs being carried because they didn't have like elevators and stuff they, they'd carry them down the stairs they'd carry them all the way you know uh, they weren't this, this Japan wasn't so wheelchair friendly then it's still not great I mean I, I think compared to other countries but it's it's much better and they have a lot of training programs here to help and if you do a quick search on YouTube you'll find like Japan type in Japan disabled they have like seminars where you, how to get to help help you get uh, employed and things like that uh, so that stuff exists now here's the other here's the weird thing okay so that's cool right like, like Japan is really doing a lot for for disabled people however at the same time, I remember vaguely about reading about some uh, disabled guy who wanted to wrestle and fight, and they wouldn't let him, of course, because he's of his because of his situation, whatever his condition. But the um, but he, there he found there's a league actually, <laughs> there's a league of. There's a wrestling league for disabled people. I don't know how to say this. It sounds so weird. There's a wrestling league for disabled people. And they want to fight. Now, if you, you might think, oh, that's cruel, that's mean, that's weird. But, I mean, I don't really see how that's much worse than, having, than watching, like, regular people fight. I mean, it's wrestling, so it's kind of fake anyway. Uh, but even if it's not fake, I mean, really, you're paying to watch people beat the shit out of each other. So, shouldn't disabled people have the same right? beat the shit out of each other and shouldn't you have the same right to see it to watch it i guess i mean is it sicker to watch I mean, if we say it's sick to watch disabled people fight then isn't that kind of uh a, a bigoted um <laughs> opinion i don't know you know um i don't you know they want to fight right they want to fight and i you know i i, I suppose it's like saying you shouldn't let women be prostitutes even if they want to be prostitutes. Um, so you're protecting their rights by by limiting their rights. You know? I, it's, I know it's really complicated. Um, and it's not, you know, of course, I'm, I'm sure people are going to tell you, oh, people are going to write in the comments, you don't understand, Victor. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I don't understand. I'm not a prostitute. I'm not a woman. I'm not, uh, I'm not physically or mentally disabled as far as I know. Uh, but, you know, I do think this, we're all kind of more, we're all kind of mentally disabled in the world. We're all kind of stupid. I really believe that. I mean, none of us are geniuses. You know? Oh yeah, they had this show on just three days ago. Uh, it was, uh, or two days, what, today, what, Saturday night? What, what's today? Today's Monday night, so maybe it was even Sunday night. Check my Twitter. I, I talked about it, but they had all these geniuses, you know, these Tensai. Tensai means geniuses. Tensai geniuses. It also, Tensai, by the way, also means... Uh, uh, disaster. So figure that one out. But they had these uh, ten sides competing with each other and, and these in amazing questions, you know, all kinds of questions. Some guy had memorized all of uh, Abraham Lincoln's speeches, to give you one idea. All these mathematical questions, you know, figure out the car, car they'll give you a few numbers and figure out how old the, the, these dinosaur bones are. They had like, I don't know how many, three, six, maybe 15 or so geniuses, right? And I was thinking, you know, this is almost like watching handicapped people wrestling. I mean, I, I got that thought later, of course. At the time, I was just like, wow, I feel stupid <laughs> watching them. But yeah, I felt like um, like they're kind of putting themselves out there as a spectacle. You know, like, look at me. I'm and be in awe of my uncanny ability. But at the same time, they're performing. They're performing, or as Ryan might say, Ryan from... Uh, oh, I forgot his channel name. Oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. Um, Ryan Boundless, yeah, might say, you know, they're performing monkeys, you know, but they have they're choosing to do that. And I was thinking, there's there are probably some really really intelligent people who choose not to appear on those shows because number one, they don't have to. For some, I mean, why would you be on that show? I don't I don't get it. If you're so fucking smart, excuse me, excuse my French, but if you're so fucking smart, why would you agree to be on that show? I don't get it. It was weird, you know. Maybe they're all young. I don't know. I don't get it. <laughs> so I'm thinking there's probably some really super genius guy who's just sitting at home going, just answering the questions like, I know that, I know that, I know that. <laughs> and he's like, but I'm not going to bother. I'm not going to waste my time. Man, maybe that's the answer. Maybe it's just simply money. Money. Well, you know, 
in the I, I I I knew this. I knew this. One of the rules of life is if you if you don't know why someone does it, the answer is probably money. Yes. Okay. So on with that. So oh yeah. So so there are a bunch of disabled videos, and I'm gonna, only going to link uh, two in the description. So you can you can check that out. Okay. Now, according to the, one of the videos in 2009, there were 350,000 disabled people in Japan, and that number was growing. Right. And Japan does a lot of things to help them. For example, the money, there's Braille on elevators, for example, in, in, in elevators, um, the, the streets, uh, the disabled people get discounts here and there. Um, so, yeah, Japan does go out of its way to try to make life easier for them. Now, here's where we get to first person, um, first person reports. OK, so the first email comes from a friend who says, who works at a you know, at a private school, and he says that he they have their fair share of students with autism, dyslexia, ADD, OCD, etc. Okay, and this is bizarre. I talked to a, I know by the way this is this is completely unrelated, not related to this research. I talked to a guy who's a manager of a um, one of those uh, a major school, a major school, and he says a lot of their teachers have OCD. And, I, and, you know, when he said that, I couldn't believe him. So I was like, what's OCD again? You know, because it didn't sound right. And, you know, it is, you know, it's, um, no, I just forgot what it meant. Oh, my God. What does OCD mean? You know, it's where you repetitive, you have to wash your hands like a million times. Um, what does it stand for? OCD. Uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. I knew that. Like, I knew that right until I turned on the camera. You guys make me nervous, I guess. Yeah, so uh, a lot of their teachers have OCD, which I thought that's pretty weird. Anyway, uh, so he says this. Go uh, back to the back to the email. We have our fair share of students who have autism, dyslexia. Oh, oh, and let me pause right there. Just dyslexia in Japanese is shitsu dokusho, but I cannot find anyone who's ever said they have it. So it must exist here because he. Japanese are, I'm going to say something really, really radical here. Japanese are human beings, just like everyone else. But apparently, uh, I've never met any Japanese person who ever, who's ever said they have it. Uh, I've talked to other people, other foreigners, who, and I've asked them, like, have you ever heard? Uh, actually, I got an email who says, no, no, someone wrote in the comments of the last video, who says that, yeah, they talk to their Japanese friends and nobody knows about this. Um, yeah, like, people don't seem to know it exists. And I, but by the way, I made some, I misspoke my last video. I said, people see the words backwards. I didn't, the letters backwards. I didn't mean that. I, I'm pretty sure that dyslexia is when you see the, the letters in, in the opposite order. Like instead of saying, uh, spelling the word fish, you might write F I H S instead of F I S H. I think that's, is that simple? Is it, is dyslexia more complicated than that? Anyway, so that gives it, it's difficult to read because you're, when you're, when you look at the letters, you, you, you switch the letters. When you look at a word, you switch the letters sometimes. I think that's what dyslexia is. I'm pretty sure that's what that's, that's what I've always thought it was. But so, yeah, um, this letter says that he knows students who have dyslexia, but I, I, I kind of think that's weird that, that, I mean, I'm surprised because as far as I know, nobody has dyslexia in Japan, but of course that's impossible. Right? And he says, we also have physically handicapped kids. And they do take lessons with other students, but there are a few that have that. But there are a few that I've been told not to put too much effort into. Just make, just make, uh, just uh, make, making them. Uh, don't make them do things they don't, they don't want to do. Okay. And he says that he because uh, you know that, he, that he's had no problems. They're young kids that he teaches, and everything's fine. Okay. Now. There are there are special schools for disabled kids. And now this is all here. So this is just an email from someone I know. But a law was passed a few years ago that stipulates that special needs kids have the right to go to regular schools if they want to. Okay, but in his opinion, he thinks they are not getting the the uh, the special attention that they need. Right uh, now, if you look at Jake Nalt's Nalton's video, Jake Nalton's video, uh, he he mentions that he teaches a couple. Uh, he volunteers at a teaching English at a school for disabled kids, and that. Is that right? Or he, he, anyway, he volunteers somewhere and he says that there's teachers sitting there next to the students, helping them along. So, and that he hasn't had a problem. Anyway, check out his video. Okay, you watch that. Now, the next video, the next uh, email, I got this, remember two emails. Anonymous email sender number two says, again, he cannot, he cannot make a video about this, but 
he, uh, as, as, well, I'll just read to it. As for children with mental disabilities, the element, and I'll, and I'll augment this email with the conversation. I actually talked to him on the phone after this, but as for children with uh, mental disabilities, the elementary and junior high school, uh, high schools normally put them in special needs classes. So there are special needs classes for kids. In these classes, the teachers try to give them the education they need, but in a really simplified form. He thinks that basically what they're trying to do is not so much uh, teach them as to teach them, not teach them any particular subject, but teach them how to be responsible human beings and how to be independent so they can survive in life later on. That's that's basically what he's saying. And also he, said, he points out that um, society doesn't really have a lot of common sense when it comes to dealing with them. Mm. Or society's idea of common sense might be difficult for them. Anyway, uh, oh, the other thing that you that I looked uh, that I noticed in that art that the um, oh I've I've dealt with, of course I've known people with disabilities and I, the one thing I do know is that they don't want to be treated difficulty I mean differently. Uh, and he said and uh, in the two thousand and nine video that I mentioned a few minutes ago called uh, what the hell is it called called two thousand two thousand and nine Japan Dis Japan disabled in that video. The guy says, I just want to be treated like everyone else. But if I look like I need help, then you should come up and ask me if I need help, just like you would anyone else. And he says that's one of the problems with, with the Japan is that the, that's, this is the kind of society that doesn't do that. And I have to agree. Uh, there have been times when I've seen people hurt, obviously needing help. Uh, this just, just today, like this woman was walking towards the garbage. Uh, there's a garbage bin with a door and, and a handle and she had her hands full and she's throwing away garbage you, you know so i opened the door for her and she was surprised like oh you opened the door for me oh that's so nice you know but people just ignore people ignore other people they they tend not to want to interact with other people that's one of the problems i, I think of, of uh, in in society today and it's I, I won't say it's a japan society it's a young person society it's a young japan person society that's one reason vending machines are so proliferate proliferate that's not the room that's not anyway they're everywhere <laughs> I, I can't i can't speak English. so they're everywhere what's the word help me out put it in the description <laughs> God. okay i'm i'm handicapped uh help me special discounts for me uh yes now i'm now it's bugging me i can't remember that word i'm thinking of. anyway vending machines are everywhere and if you think about it 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 has to do with the fact that young people don't want to deal with other human beings so People don't want to interact with each other, right? People react, and, but this is happening all over the world in, di in different uh, degrees. I just saw on Facebook the other day, someone showed like a picture of kids in the 1960s and they're all sitting back playing guitar together and hanging out. But now everyone's sitting there together looking into their cell phone. Like everyone is, you know, checking out their cell phone together at the same time. Oh, let's all check out our cell phone. Oh, I got a message. Great. Let me just type this message. And this has been going on for four years. I broke up with a girl. Well, I didn't break up with her. I, I went out. I stopped going out with a girl <laughs> because she she kept fucking you know, emailing during the during our date. But obviously that's because I'm I wasn't very interesting for her. So, um, should I I should have Julian blanked that girl. Dun dun. dun. Just kidding. Just kidding. Rape jokes. Are, you rape rape jokes are never funny. So I got to say, I did see a rape joke on SNL today. It's called Evil Boss. And the boss, I forgot his character. I forgot this guy's name. It's a guy in Anchorman. What's his name? The guy in Anchorman. Will Ferrell. He's like, I'm so angry. I'm I'm this close to raping you. <laughs> I got to admit, that was, that was pretty funny. <laughs> I think man-on-man -man rape jokes, I guess, are completely fun. You know, you can do that. Okay, let's get back to this. So occasionally let me see so they try to teach kids common sense right and how to survive in society i'm sorry how to survive in this society in a society they may not be that friendly to them and in japan yeah it's it's a society it's a society that tends to want to not deal with the other members in that society so people feel alone sometimes okay occasionally especially if strongly requested by the parents right the school will let them study with in regular classes, as long as there is another teacher in the classroom who will sit next to the, the disabled student, you know, air quotes, and help them along. And that's a, that goes along with what Nalt, with uh, Jake Nalton said. So that seems to be true. Not that I doubt any of this information. This is all from people I know. Okay. Let's see. If very rarely, though, the student, uh, sometimes the student can handle regular classes, which are taught in a normal manner. So the student might go to a regular high school. But in most cases, depending on the level of the, of the disorder, 
After junior high school, the students with mental disabilities will either go to a facility or a school that specializes in training to help them get work. So that should answer pretty much everyone's questions regarding uh, disabled kids in Japan. Uh, Japan is not as evil as many of people think. Even I, uh, even I'm surprised at, at the, uh, the good information I found here. Someone in the last video wrote, my Chinese wife says that Japanese typically kill their kids if they're disabled. And I really doubt that. Typically, that's, I mean, typically means like usually in my head, right? And I don't think that's like, like a usual thing. Uh, though, I don't know how you, are, you would ever get those st statistics. But ironically, I mean, uh, ironically, I have the impression that Chinese people will kill their child if it's a girl because they're only allowed, they've got that one child policy. Is that still going on, by the way? So maybe that's not true either. You know, if, if the Chinese people think th that about the Japanese, then maybe our, concept, our, per our perceptions of the Chinese are equally incorrect because... Please tell me if you if you have the same uh, perception. Uh, are you under the impression that, chi that it's common or fairly or not unheard of? <laughs> well, don't go common. It's kind of common, kind of common. Okay, okay. it's um, because of the one child policy and Chinese want their child to be a male. They they will often kill uh, the child if it's female. That's what I've heard. Have you heard that too? If so. Uh, tell me in the comments. I'm really curious, and maybe that's not true. And if you're Chinese, let me know if that's not true. I would be. I'm. 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 I hope I'm wrong because that that's a terrible thing to happen. But again, I would say that's probably not true about Japanese. Um, and I think if you get to know disabled people or people with handicaps, uh, you know, it's that that fear. I think of having a disabled child, which you know, as you know, my wife is pregnant, and I think. You know, someone wrote a comment like months ago, well, you know, you shouldn't have kids, you know, after my wife is pregnant, you know, because they could be retarded, you know. Well, you know, I talked, to, I, I'll admit that that is a fear. Any, I think any parent will, any parent has that their child will, will you know, have some kind of disability, of course. The, the, the thing everyone says is, I just want them to be born healthy with 10 fingers and 10 toes, right? Um, in my case, I, w I would mind the kid being born like a mutant claws, snick, snicked, right? Um, but uh, I think, you know, I think in the end, and whatever happens, you know, I think I'm going to be okay. And I think I've known enough disabled people that that I know it's the disability, does, the disability does not define them. And they're going to be okay. And I think I'm not that special in thinking that. I think a lot of Japanese probably have the same, a lot of parents, any human being, not any, but many human beings probably have the same feeling. Um, not everyone, of course, but I think a lot of us do, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Like I told you, I met a guy in, in a museum the other day with a Down syndrome son, and he seemed, he seemed completely fine with his son. He wasn't embarrassed by him at all, um, which is good, so I'm glad to see that. Anyway, thanks for watching this long-ass this long -ass video again. It was a pleasure to make. I learned a lot. I want to thank everyone who contributed, and I'll see you in the next video.